Welcome ladies and gents, let's build a computer. The first step is to install your CPU. Grab your motherboard, lift this little latch here by pushing down, out, and up. Then line up the gold triangle on the bottom left of the CPU with a triangle indentation on your motherboard and lower it into place. Let it fall into place on its own. If it doesn't fit, then you installed it wrong. For a Ryzen CPU, it is very similar. You just have to remember that the pins are on the CPU and not the motherboard and they are pretty fragile. Then after that, you just lower the levers down into place, securing the CPU. Second step is installing memory or your RAM. Grab your sticks, locate the dims on your motherboard, pull back these little retention arms, line up the notch on the RAM sticks with the notch in the motherboard, and then lower it into the correct dim slot. You can refer to your motherboard manual for the correct information, or you can look on the motherboard and it will say it sometimes. Now just firmly push your memory into place. It should be followed by two clicks signaling that it is in right. If it doesn't go down, then you install the wrong. Just flip it around and try the other way. Third step is a CPU cooler. If you're using stock coolers, then the Intel ones are just little push pins and you want to push it securely into place. If you're using a stock Ryzen cooler, then you want to remove the original mounting hardware on the motherboard and screw it into the backplate going in a crisscross pattern until all four screws are tightened. If you're using a tower style cooler, then find your appropriate mounting hardware, follow the instruction provided with your cooler, Add some thermal paste and plug in the fan cable to the CPU fan header, which is just above the CPU to the right. Now, the motherboard is done and ready for a case, unless you're using M.2 drives. In that case, grab your M.2, locate the M.2 slot on the motherboard, make sure the standoff is installed in the right place, line the notches up just like we did with the RAM, and put it in at a 45 degree angle, and then screw it into place with the tiny screw provided in your motherboard box. Now, the motherboard is done. Next up, well, it's the case. Grab your case and take all the side panels off. It allows you to have the most room to work with. Locate your accessory bag or box, which provides all the screws needed. Grab your motherboard I.O. shield and secure it into the back of the case, pushing in all four corners evenly. Sometimes it can be a pain, but you'll get it. Grab your motherboard and ensure all the standoffs are installed. Check that by lining the screw holes on the motherboard with the holes on the case. If there isn't a standoff there, well, then install one. Once your standoffs are all installed, lower the motherboard into place lining up the rear ports with the I.O. shield cutouts. Install a screw where all the standoffs are. The power step. Grab your power supply. Most cases you install your PSU at the bottom with the fan facing down. In this case, we will be installing it at the top with the fan still facing down. Quick tip, always install the PSU with the fan facing wherever the opening is. Most of the time it is down. Slide it into place and secure it with the big hexagon screws. Now for the step that everyone is afraid of for some odd reason, cable time. First, grab your case cable, start with the USB 3, which is the big old fatty, and it goes here. Sometimes it takes a bit of force. If you also have a USB 2 connector, then that goes here. Now for front audio, locate the header, it's almost always at the bottom left of the motherboard. It will be labeled AAFP or HD audio. Line up the missing pin and push it into place. Now for the hardest connectors, or that's what people think. Front panel connections, the little octopus connectors. Locate the header, almost always at the bottom right of the motherboard. The most common name is F underscore panel. Your hard drive LED wire goes on the bottom with the positive side to the left. On top is where your power LED goes with the positive wire on the left. Beside the hard drive LED is your reset switch and I install it with the words pointing down. Above that is the most important wire, the power switch, and I plug that in with the words facing up. Finally, your PSU cables. The other big fatty is the 24 pin power plug and that goes here, it clicks into place. Next up is your CPU power cable, which can either be a four, eight pin, or a double eight pin, and that goes here. That also clicks into place. Now, if you have SATA power drives, then take your SATA data cables, which comes with your motherboard box, and plug them into SATA ports starting with SATA 1, 2, and so on. Now, take your storage drives, locate your hard drive bay or SSD tray, and secure your drives into place.
Next, take your SATA data cable and plug it into here. It only goes in one way, so don't force it. Now, take your SATA power cable from your power supply and plug it in here. Next step is cooling. We have to install the fans unless they're using the fans that are in your case, but I'm going to be installing some budget-friendly RGB fans. We need three on the bottom, one on the back side, and one at the rear. For the bottom three, we want them as intake. The fans pull in air from the front, normally where the logo or sticker is, and they push it out the back, normally where you can see the wire. So the correct position for intake fans is this, And the correct position for exhaust fans is this. Then you just secure them with the included fan screws, plug them into the fan controller, and you're all set. The final step besides cable management, of course, the graphics card. Line it up with the PCIe X16 slot, which is just the longest slot on the motherboard. Then see what PCIe slot covers you have to remove, pull back this little latch here, push your GPU into place, and you should hear it click. Then secure it down with screws, take your PCIe power cable from your power supply, route it to the front of the case, and plug that baby in. Okay, now that the build is done, you have it plugged in and hooked up to a monitor, the most stressful part, turning it on and hoping it works. Ooh, look at that RGB though. Please something appear on the monitor. Come on, come. Oh, I see something. Let's go boys. Alrighty, as you can see, it is running just fine. If you guys were wondering what parts I used for this build, the CPU was an i5-6600K, the graphics card was an ASUS GTX 1060 6GB version, the motherboard was an MSI B150 Gaming M3, the RAM was a T-Force Dark 2x8GB kit clocked at 2400MHz, and for storage I just went with a 120GB SSD and a 1TB hard drive. Power supply was an EVGA 450 watt BT 80 plus bronze. The case was an Inwin 101 black. It's an ATX case. It's honestly pretty clean. The fans were the Cool Moon ARGB a six pack of fans. I'm honestly pretty surprised with them. They come with a little remote and they look pretty good for the price. And the cooler was a Gamax 400. It's a tower style CPU cooler. If you guys were curious about the total price, it was $340.64, not that it matters too much for this video. Anyways, that's how you guys build a PC, I hope this video was able to help you out. My goal for this video was to help you out and to be just straight to the point with no bluff, so I hope I succeeded with that. Drop me a like if you enjoyed it, and here's a final tip for building PCs. Buy an electric screwdriver, it'll be linked below, it honestly helps so much, and everything else that I use to build this PC will also be linked below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.